Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Awaken the Wonder. I'm excited to continue my conversation, part two, with Mark Brown. I'm here on location in North Carolina. I'm at the Apple Hill Lodge, and I'm excited here because Mark Brown has been a missionary, is a businessman. He's uh, done just the stuff that the everyday average Joe would do and being a handyman, going to work, earning it by the sweat of his brow. And uh, the cool thing is today we're going to talk about how a guy like Mark, who would say that he's done a lot of ordinary things, is actually now flowing in the gift of healing. And he's also uh, seeing in the spirit. You may say, well, uh, you know, I've been going to church. I've been praying. I've been reading my Bible. I'm doing doing what I know to do, and I've never seen it in the Spirit, and I'm not seeing any miracles. Well, this is the perfect interview for you because Mark is actually seeing these things happen all the time. And the cool thing is he kind of stumbled into it uh, almost seemingly on accident, although the Lord was purposefully using it. Uh, so I'm excited to welcome back Mark Brown. Thank you, Caleb. Yeah, good to have you here. And it's nice to nice to be sitting in uh, one of the properties here <laughs> that you've been a part of. So it's it's a beautiful place here in Moravian Falls, and and uh, this is really where our walk in the supernatural uh, took hold in our lives, uh, in my life especially. Uh, but I'll back you up and 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 take you through the the progression of getting here. Uh, my wife and I, as, as we had talked about earlier, we have nine children. Five are, are adopted. My wife always wants to make sure that. Everybody knows she didn't do that to herself nine times. But <laughs> anyway, we, as Christians, as, as believers, we wanted to bring our, our children up in the church, and consequently, we were very involved with the, uh, our, our non-denominational church in Pennsylvania. Uh, if the church doors were open, pretty much we were there. Um, Nancy, at that time, was was very involved with with the youth group for twelve years, twelve and a half years, whatever it was. Uh, taught uh, I taught the children. In the, the younger children in in, uh, in Sunday school on both Sunday and, and the midweek service, and you know it was it was a reasonable sized church. We were running probably 150 kids, and uh, the 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 gentleman that was over me in, in the children's department uh, was was uh, had a good program, and and I actually taught. You know, part of our program was was the Willie George, if you remember him, with, with your kids growing up, or you'll probably find out about him going on. Um, really active in, in, in the supernatural, but, and so teaching these lessons, they didn't really sink in to become part of my life, if you understand what yeah, I'm saying. definitely. You know, you didn't, there was no practical application of it in church. There was no actual training on how to pray for someone for healing or anything in the supernatural, nothing on the prophetic. You know, once a year or something, they, the, the church would have a, a prophetic prophet come in and, and he may, he you know uh, may or may not call on you to, to give you a word that right. year uh, <laughs> never did call on us all the years that we were there um, he, so you didn't get a word you didn't get slain in the spirit you didn't have any kind of Holy Ghost roller moment it was no, just didn't just didn't try to pay your tithes and call and, it good <laughs> and do our best to bring our kids up in the church so that yeah. they would know God and, and know Jesus and and have a relationship you know that was our, our ultimate goal um, but God kind of changed things in in 2004 uh, we sold our business and and stepped into missions and and even getting there was kind of a supernatural thing I, I'm a um, and you took a lot of steps of faith for not you know seeing a lot of supernatural things you might have been operating in the gift of faith for all you knew and and i think a lot of times even you know when you look back and and after you've learned about the prophetic and and the supernatural you you recognize that you prayed in the, in the supernatural you prayed prophetically over people and you just didn't realize it in that moment because you weren't trained in it you had no grid for it no teaching in it to really make it practical in your life even though you had the bible stories there you you shared the bible you, you, you know, we taught the kids the story, Bible stories. We just didn't step into it. And, and it was a process of getting there. The, the first step in that was I, I heard this crazy guy on, on uh, one of the uh, Christian television shows by the name of David Hogan. And, and told about fasting. And, and I had struggled up to that point in my life with fasting. Was never taught as a child. Never discussed fasting. Uh, but I, I, at that point, I, I just got inspired to, to try it and to step into it. And through that process is what led to us selling our business 
and 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 then the next step was was because we knew we were called to go to outer mongolia to get there um, but because we were taking four kids we went through ywam youth with a mission first which is an awesome organization I, i'd encourage people to to check into that for their their young folks um and and we used that as a launching point to to bring our kids and then move with the, with the kids to outer mongolia and and we're living there and we're seeing so you went from just kind of doing your best to now you're a missionary fasting and praying still and, not really but maybe still experiencing not, the supernatural but still not having a grid for living. for healing or prophetic yeah. or or really any of the supernatural and when it did happen it it, it was a head scratcher um one day we we were called to go to a lady's home and, and her gear her tent that she lived in and and pray for her she had a goiter on her neck that was like the size of a football hanging off of the side of her neck and, and this was a saturday because it was the only time we had we we went we prayed for her and guess what nothing happened <laughs> just what we expected <laughs> so we 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 blessed her and, and and we left thinking you know that, that was just you know normal now we've got to go do what we would normally do on a saturday afternoon and, and take care of our kids and and then we show up at church on sunday morning and this this lady's there and uh the pastor uh brings her over to us and says that she wants to thank us for coming to her home the day before and praying for her and we're like yeah that's nice where's her sister because this lady standing before us had no goiter on her neck. Overnight, it completely disappeared. She was completely healed, <laughs> and we couldn't believe it happened. We, we had no <laughs> grid for this kind of thing. So then you, you, you fast forward through that. The next step was we came home kind of wow. almost as missionaries with our tail between our legs. We were broke and sick, and, and it was just the progression of things. But we got home, and at that point now, we've got four young kids that are not young anymore, but they're ready to start college. So I kind of, you know, focus on the finances and get back to work trying to make ends meet and, you know, just feed the family and, and that. And Nancy just digs her heels in and she says, I want more of God and I'm not going back to Mongolia <laughs> or anywhere without that more. Now, we know that the name of the ministry is More, more Ministries. ministries and, and that's kind of where it, where it that's started. That's where it birthed, huh? Yes, it did. And, you know, it, it was, she, she took, you want to talk about steps of faith? We're, we're living in Northeast Pennsylvania. She has our 17-year-old son who's only been driving for three months because she was so sick at that point. Drive her from Northeast Pennsylvania to Atlanta, Georgia, to a Gary Oates conference Whew. because she heard this guy had seen angels. Yes, that's, that's faith having your 17-year-old drive you when, when um, you know, that just wasn't her thing. She had me teach all the kids to drive. So for her to drive with him was a step of faith. And she comes back from that and she says, hey, there's, there's these uh, conferences that are happening in, in North Carolina and, and I wanna go in, in Moravian Falls. I don't know where Moravian Falls is. I know where North Carolina is, but I don't have any idea. And she says, but it's expensive. Can we go? I um, said, so, well, if it's expensive, you'll have to put it on the card because yeah. we don't have any money. <laughs> So she puts it on the credit card. I didn't realize how expensive it was until I got the credit card bill. Once I got the credit card bill, I'm like, no matter what, we're going. I paid that much money. We have, you were like, can we get our money back here? I'm, but she's like, no, we are going. No, I, I was, you know, there was no getting out of it at that point. So, so we come and, you know, it was a really uh, special time. At that time, Gary Oates, um, who we, we uh, have a lot of respect for. Uh, he's one of the guys whose shoulders I feel we stand on at this point. He uh, w is doing these conferences here in Moravian Falls. He calls them Transformation Summits, and they are week-long conferences. They, they start on uh, Friday evening or Saturday morning, I forget just when, and they go until the following Sunday. And you, um, you come in and there's 50 people at these conferences maximum, I think it was at the time, They're, they're doing them right here on, on Prayer Mountain in Moravian Falls. And you would have guys like, whose names I had never heard of at that time, Bobby Connor, Bob Jones, Larry Randolph, uh, Mahesh Shavda, and, and Gary Oates in, in now, All these guys are big names now, but <laughs> you had no idea. <laughs> I, they they might have been big then, but I didn't know who they were. Right. You know, they we'd been overseas for, for you know, three and a half, four years prior to that. So uh, this was not part of our, we were not part of the charismatic movement at that time. You know, things were not, 
we, they were unknowns and, and you would have them in a room of 50 people. And, and if you had a question, you had all the meals together. So if you had a question for one of these guys, you could ask him at lunch because he was at the next table. But at the same time, the, the important part was God opened our eyes to begin seeing angels and to start moving in the prophetic wow. at that time. And, and, and that's really what gave me the hunger. And Nancy already had it, but it, it, once you put the two of our hungers together, it was, it was <laughs> a lot more hunger than, than just her hungering after it. Now, to this day, that has continued. Absolutely, and it's increased. It's it's increased because what we did from there was as, as um, you know from our bio is we we went to Randy Clark's Global School of Supernatural Ministry in, in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, and that kind of launched us more deep and and we learned how to pray for people for healing. You know, there's it's there's it's not you you need to really study how Jesus prayed for those in, for, that needed healing. They were all healed, but he never did it the same twice. Yeah. So it, it, it was just a, uh, it was an incredible teaching. So, and, so let's, let's pause for a second. So sure. you, those that are saying, okay, well, I want to see in the spirit, we'll get to healing in, uh, next. But like, what's a good stepping stone or what's a good practical step they can do to start positioning themselves to be able to see in the spirit? It, it's, it's really pretty simple. Ask God. You just need to ask and then take time and get quiet and, and spend some alone time with him. Get in your word, uh, study about the prophets. So many people skip over the Old Testament minor prophets and there's so much good stuff in there. Yeah. That's so good. And I, I think that take time part is important. It's kind of like, you know, somebody who's praying to get healed or to get baptized in the Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. they go down to the front two or three times and oh, I tried that and they and, give up, you know, yes. you didn't do it at home. You just did it at a service. You move on with your and, life and but you're then there's, content without it. You but know? then there's actually another part of it that I think is is critical that, that a lot of folks are, are not willing to do. And, and that's take a risk. Mm, that's you you once you've you you've spent some time alone and and, and I don't mean like years you need to spend a little time, some time alone, but it doesn't have to be years of your life or something like that. It, it just needs to be practical in the time that God gives you. And then when you get into a situation, I don't care if you're pumping gas in your car or buying food at the supermarket or at Walmart buying Christmas toys or whatever you're doing, ask Holy Spirit to reveal something to you to an about another person and then be bold to go and speak it to them. What does the revealing look like? If somebody's like, okay, well, sometimes I, I, I might be willing to ask Holy Spirit, but how do I know what he said? Or how do I know that I sensed it or felt it? Or, you know? it, it comes in different ways. And, and you know, it could be a, 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 a premonition. It could be a picture that God gives you. Or you could be in front of somebody and God gives you a word like son or daughter or child or something like that. And you, if you're just faithful to open your mouth and ask them, tell them, I'm a Christian, and, and I really think God wants me to pray for your child. And if you don't know that person and that person has a child, that right there is a conversation starter. Yeah. They're, they're going to be floored that God's thinking about them enough to have you, a stranger, speak into their life that it can change their walk. I've seen more people, we've seen incredible, amazing testimonies of healings and people are more impacted by one prophetic word than, than an amazing healing that you would think would be more important and change their life for Jesus. That's where, so good. Wow. And now in your ministry, more ministries, where can people follow your ministry? Uh, where, what, where well, can they, can, they, they can look us up at, at uh, online at, at the website at, at uh, more ministries. And, and you're laughing at my wife looking at the card. Now I got to look and make sure I'm giving it the right website for more. It's uh, more ministries and retreats. More www.moremoravianfalls.com. Moremoravianfalls.com. Okay. Yeah. And um, you guys, uh, with your team, you've got you and your wife Nancy and uh, Susan, Susan and, and, her husband, and Frank, Frank. Starr. And you guys have opportunities for impartation, activation, prayer retreats, and there's obviously other things on the website as well. Yes, uh, and, and you know, we, we just want to be open to encourage believers. That's, so, that's we, our real heart, is to encourage the believers. That's so good. I would encourage you to go on there definitely for sure. Now, Mark, let's talk about healing for just a moment. Now, you guys have seen 
lots of healings. You've ministered healings uh, on an episode that we've done with Nancy. She talks about deliverance as well. So you guys have had a lot of different, um, you've worn a lot of different hats within the spiritual bubble, so to speak. But well, um, but with healing, uh, that's something people don't know how to to deal with sometimes, you know, why do some people get healed and why do others not get healed and why, are, or maybe they're just in process versus instantaneous versus, you know, talk to me about that. Um, it, it's, it, when, when you talk about healing and deliverance, all of those things, Nancy probably explained, it, it all goes hand in hand. The prophetic, you can get a prophetic word in, in that leads to deliverance, that leads to healing. If we're praying for someone for healing and, and we hit a, a, a a point where if they're, say they're in pain in their back and we're praying for them and they feel a little improvement, but it stops and they're still in pain, in serious pain, even though it's a little better, it's still there. Then, then we, as we're praying, we're asking the Holy Spirit, what's the block? What can we, what can we impart into them? What can we say to them that will get them to open up to, to, to bring this to fruition? Because we know Jesus healed everyone completely. We know that that's what he wants to do. We just don't know what the route is to get there because he did it, like I said, every time differently. So it's, it's a process of asking Holy Spirit to guide us, to pull it out of them, to get to where that block is, to get them to the point where they're completely restored, completely healed. And, and, and back to um, how do they get there? How do folks get there? Before we started this interview, you and I were discussing skiing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we raised our family in the mountains and we raised our, our kids skiing. And we, we used to, every so often when you're there skiing, you would have somebody that hasn't had a lesson and they would just come bombing straight down the hill. And that's what we call them bombers because they're just flying straight. <laughs> they're not turning. They're completely out of control. And we know they they're called bombers because they're going to explode. <laughs> sooner or later, they're going to run into somebody and it's going to be skis and yeah. poles all over the place. And, and, and we used to make the comment to them because we were there with our kids every single week taking lessons and and we we'd help them up and then we'd say get a lesson so that's the same advice i would say if you're in a church that hasn't been teaching that that it doesn't mean the pastor's close to it he just hasn't had the experience there, there there's a lot of good people that just haven't there they're, they seem to teach out of experience and not out of what the bible says go to a conference, go to a training, whatever you need to do, come come to a retreat here in Moravian Falls and, and we'd love to teach folks about how to do this. That's that's what we do now when we travel internationally. We, we go and, and we, we don't go as, as the great healing evangelists. We don't, you know, we're, we're happy to teach a group of 15 or 20 people. We don't need a thousands of, of type of setting to teach in. But what we will do when two people get healed, they become part of the prayer team. They're gonna pray for the next person to be healed. So that they're not only being set free and being healed, but they've also learned how to step into it and, and pray for the next person because we're only there for 10 days to two weeks or whatever the, the time frame is that we have. And Jesus wants to stay there yeah. and, and heal these folks and Amen. walk with them all their lives. Now, you can you give me a, a story or two? You mentioned the woman with the goiter earlier. Can you tell me a couple of other healing stories just to build people's faith that God can do it for them? Um, I, I, I'm going to share one. Uh, it was the last time we were back in Mongolia. It was, was two years ago. Um, we're, we're up in an area of the country that we hadn't been in before. It's, it's up by uh, Lake Hove School in the northern part of Mongolia. We're there in, in August, and there's frost in the morning to give you the idea of the climate that we're, we're talking about. And Nancy, uh, we, th this whole story is, is just really incredible. We, we've got this little girl that's like 19 years old. She's our interpreter. And, and the reason we have her is because our contact there said she's her best English student at the time. And she wants her to get the experience translating. So she's translating for us. And, and here this little girl is um, Hindu. She's, she's not, does, hasn't been around Christians her entire life, and now she's on this caravan thing with us to, out in the countryside. And, and Nancy, Nancy teaches a lesson, of course, on healing, and, and my wife is bold. She may seem like a, a, a quiet lady when you talk to her, and, and she gets shy around people sometimes, but she gets real bold in the spirit. And we're in this room full of maybe 50 people, and uh, there's 
people on crutches and, and canes and one man in a wheelchair. And I know it. she's got the look in her eye immediately. You know, she asked who needs her prayer for healing after teaching the lesson, because we always teach the lesson first. And she looks around the room, and the first thing she does is get the guy in the wheelchair to come up. <laughs> Go after the hardest one the, first. Uh, you know, I'm thinking, honey, can't we just like start with a sore throat first and, <laughs> and, and work from there? But but her, you know, God just gets on her in those situations, and she wants to make that statement, and wow. and it and it kind of just breaks the yoke in that room, and it's incredible what happens from there. The man gets up out of the wheelchair, starts walking around the room. Hallelujah. He's been in the wheelchair for, I, I forget the time frame, you know, 15 or 20 years. This man, he's an older gentleman, been in the wheelchair for a long time. He starts walking. The lady with the crutches puts him down and starts walking. And it's just, it's chaos in the room. It's a good chaos, but it's chaos. Because now we've got them praying for each other, and we don't even know what they're being healed of because we're not speaking the language. There's not enough translators. And and the, the poor translator that we have, she's being overwhelmed. She's never seen the love of Jesus come pouring out in one room in such a short period of time. So after a couple hours of, of people, one after another, being healed of, of crazy, miraculous things, she turns turns around and says, what do I need to do to be saved? I want to be a Christian. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Come on, man. So good. And, and it's, it's just an incredible experience to, to step in faith, step out into these places, and go and do the stuff. The Word says that you will do these things and more. We spent the first, whatever, 40 years of our walk with Christ in in not doing these things. How do we expect to get to the more? Wow. So now we've started to step into to the these things. Now more is and kind now of the more. more is coming. We've seen some some things that are more that that are just off the charts. That that you know we don't even know what they're going to be yet. We just know the beginning of them. Even some of the things, some of the trips that we've been on, we we've had people contact us after a year and and two years three years and and we didn't we'd lost contact with them and tell us how god has been moving in their life since the since the the short lesson that we were able to go to them and teach wow. and and it's incredible you know we don't even know the impact that god is having come on through Man. just the stepping into the more jesus thank you so much i um I'd love to have you pray in just a second here, but just um, those that are watching today, just take a step of faith. You've got coworkers, you go to gas stations, you go to restaurants, you got people around you at the shopping malls and the grocery stores. There's people that need a touch and they're gonna stay the same way they are unless you as a glory carrier of the presence of God, open up your mouth in this voice activated kingdom and just begin to allow the spirit of God to move upon them. I love it. Amen. Can, can, yeah. Can, can you pray for, absolutely. for everybody? I, I Maybe can. there's people that need healing or the other part of it, they just need the faith to take a step Let's of faith. Step out. Yeah. I, so let's, let's pray right now. Father, I just pray for everyone watching that, that gets to see this uh, podcast, Father, this show, whatever you're calling it. Jesus, it doesn't matter because you're all over it. And I, and I thank you for that, Father. But I just pray right now that everyone that's maybe they've never even prayed uh, in person yes. for someone for healing, Lord, that they would just have the boldness to step into it and pray for a person that comes in front of them that, that needs a healing, Lord, so that their lives would be touched. Lord, a, a word of knowledge or a prophetic word, I just release it through those that have never done it, Lord, that you would just download, give them a picture, an image, or something to speak into someone's life, to change their life for Jesus, that, that they would cross the path of those who are hurting and, and have been trampled down and beaten up in this life, Lord, that need your light and your hope in their, in their lives, Lord. We're all brothers and sisters and we need to just step into it so lord i just pray that you would release your faith and if there's anyone that's listening that that needs a healing in their body right now i just ask jesus that you would reach down through your holy spirit and touch those whatever it is heal them father i, I just release your supernatural healing on every pain on every disease every kind of ailment it doesn't matter what it is or where you're at. If you'll just step into it, receive it, and try out your body and, and f recognize that God is going to 
change your body. You'll feel heat. You'll feel electricity. Whatever it is, whatever way God uses to touch, sometimes you'll feel cold. Sometimes the pain will feel worse. But in that moment, God is touching and healing you. Just receive it and step into it and try out your body, and you'll see that God is working on it. And I ask all of this in Jesus' mighty and powerful name throughout the airwaves, anyone in need in Jesus name. Thank yeah. you, Father. And Lord, I just, I rebuke every cancer right now. I rebuke every tumor right now. I just pray that they would yes. dissolve every cyst, um, every, even a goiter, Lord, you, you healed the goiter Amen. right now. Lord, just, I rebuke that right now in Jesus name. Right now, I pray for everybody dealing with intestinal issues, those with nerve damage, those that are uh, dealing with uh, things in their skin issues, rashes, whatever it may be, God. I rebuke COVID-19 off your body. I rebuke pneumonia in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that you would just release the Spirit of God from head to toe on every single person, Lord. Electrify them with the power of the Holy Spirit, that they would step forth with faith, and they would begin to uh, activate this voice-activated kingdom in Jesus' name. I just pray that every mountain would move right now in Jesus' name. And right now, I pray for blessing to fall upon your people in this time. Right now, we, we ask all this in your name. And I just specifically pray right now for heart ailments, heart issues. I've just recently been attacked with this, so I release healing in that area right now in Jesus' name. Anyone that's being attacked with any kind of a heart uh, heart attack, heart, high blood pressure, anything connected with the heart. I speak healing yes. and strength back to the hearts in Jesus' mighty Hallelujah. name. Hallelujah. Yes, in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Friends, if you uh, have received a healing right now, please send us your testimonies at info at kingdomencounters.us. You can go on to uh, YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram, Evangelist Caleb Wampler. We'd love to hear your stories. And Mark, uh, can you tell people again how they can follow you and stay connected to the ministry? You can connect with us on at uh, moremoreministries.com, moremoravianfalls.com. Moremoravianfalls.com. And make sure you go on there and uh, you can come and enjoy even the place that I'm currently sitting in right now. <laughs> love, this is a beautiful place here. I've, I've appreciated it. Um, thanks for your hospitality here and I appreciate the interview here, Mark. Blessings, my Thank friend. You. <laughs> Thank you. All right, until next time, guys, we'll see you soon. Thank you for listening to Awaken the Wonder. If you enjoyed today's show and want more ministry like this, please visit kingdomencounters.us where you can find weekly blogs and my latest book, Hunger. Be sure to subscribe and follow me on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at the tag Evangelist Caleb Wampler. If the Lord leads you to partner with us in the nations in prayer and giving, visit kingdomencounters.us. I'll see you next time.